Uh, today's video is going to be this silver, uh, it's a three in one portable cassette boombox type unit. Obviously, got a cassette player over here, got a little four inch black and white or monochrome television, and also a radio as you'd expect in most of these units, even though they look like it, these speakers aren't actually detachable. I'm not sure what year this is from, but I'm guessing it's sort of late 80s, early 90s, somewhere around there. Uh, it's an SVT48. Um, as it says, 4 inch. And um, basically the problem with this is one I bought off eBay. Because I always wanted to have one of these little boom boxes with a TV in it for some reason. And never got around to getting one. I saw this one come up. Uh, it was in quite bad, sort of dirty condition. And everything was said to work except obviously the TV is only analog. So there's no signal left for that to pick up, but you can plug different older stuff into there. I've actually got a set-top box here that comes out on UHF analog, so that even could be used. Um, and the other problem, the only problem with it said was that the tape was playing slow, which it was. Though I unfortunately forgot to actually record what it sounded like, though it was just a tad on the slow side. So I'm actually making this video after I've actually repaired the tape deck, just as an intro. So we'll get into having a look at inside the unit, and um, this is, has been cleaned up a bit at this stage, but it was quite grotty condition when I got it. So we'll have a look inside, but it's, it's only pretty simple repair, this one. Uh, this is the inside of the unit. Um, obviously got some radio section here, we've got our antenna coil, tuning capacitor, you can see a few IF coils and these little chips, a bit of radio section. Uh, we've got our um, function, one of these is the function switch, TV, radio, cassette. Uh, the other one, I forget what that was, it's, oh, it's the AM, FM switch there. And we've got an on off switch and a mono stereo for the radio by the look of it. Volume, balance and tone controls. Uh, you can see one speaker just sticking out there. And further along here, there's our other speaker. This is the TV section here. We've got this little tiny 4-inch picture tube here. It's only got a very thin neck on that. It would be easy to break, so I've got to be very careful I don't bump that against anything. It's probably, I don't know, 15 millimetres maybe, in, if, if that in diameter, the neck on that. Uh, tiny little yoke there. This whole circuit board here looks to be TV. It's got, a, got the antenna socket on the back. Tuner module. That's our TV brightness and contrast and might have been vertical hold or something. Looks like some sort of voltage regulator I'm guessing on that heatsink. There's also a line output transformer. Tiny little one down in there. And I can see like a bipolar cap which is probably the horizontal to the yoke or something. There's a, looks like a horizontal drive transformer and possibly horizontal output transistor that doesn't even have a heatsink on it. But I'm concerned with the the cassette player section, we can see a motor sticking out there. That is a, what are they, Mabuchi, I think the standard sort of red labelled motor, EG 500AD2B, counterclockwise, uh, 2400 RPM, 12 volt, just quite a standard motor, so it's possible that's actually faulty in this unit because it's running slow, but I, thought, I reckon it's more likely the belts, but that is a possibility. Uh, we've got this record playback switch here, which actually has a bit of like dial cord string going or spring and then a lever down into the deck, so that's a bit different. I'm not sure I've seen one with string on it before, but uh, may have done. We've got, it looks like an electric microphone built in there. I can't see a second one, so I'm not sure it records in stereo off microphone. But it looks like it does have a microphone in it. Um, but yeah, we can see down the, the cassette player down in here. So for some reason this tape deck's running slow, which could be the motor. The belts all seem to be in pretty good nick, so could be that the capstan's stiff or something. Pinch roller, pinch roller's nice and loose. The reels all seem to be turning, though the play didn't have an awful lot of torque. Pretty rare these motors died, but it does happen. I guess the only thing I really need to do is try and out. Be very careful not to break this picture tube by accident. Let's see if I can work out how much 
slippage is on that belt if any yeah it's pretty slippy I'm holding the motor still and it takes virtually nothing to so it could well be yeah that's actually now slipping I'm turning the caps down the motor's not even turning so it could also be a bad sign that the motor is fairly stiff could be both stiff motor and slippy belt could just be the belt slipping but yeah wouldn't be surprised if the motor's also not in the best condition with the age of it so we're going to have to let's see we don't have any oh yes we do have a dial cord for the radio unfortunately down in here it's the dial cord coming up I'm not sure that we can pull that off what have they done here not sure how they've attached the tuning capacitor to that because I can see a screw thread Oh yeah, I think that will lift off. I reckon that's going to be the case that it's just poked in there. There's some sort of shaft that fits inside another bit. Hopefully. Must magnetise that screwdriver. This one isn't much better, I don't think. Yeah, that's got plenty of pull on it there. Yeah, so we'll take these two screws. Right. I need the antenna coil. One over there. And I'll we'll have to pull that string for the record place which oh, unhook that while look at it. Of this TV circuit board's in the way a bit. There goes the camera. Should lift that up a bit higher. Oh yeah, that just lifts out beautiful. That's a good design. It's not that often you can say that in electronics repairs, but occasionally you do find a good design, and the Japanese are good at making things easy to fix, and I guess sometimes it helped them assemble it in the factory easier too, but a lot of people just care about the assembling at the factory the cheapest and not making it easy to repair, so there's our little spring on that. Now we saw this other screw. That's quite a long one, that's why it wouldn't come out. Yeah, it's catching on the motor a bit. Maybe just start unplugging a few things. That would be our record playback head there. That might even have whatever this might be the race head or something. That's probably enough to get it out of the way. motor here. Oh, what have we got here? Something loose. Ooh, where's that falling off? That was probably sitting up here or something. I'll have a look at that after. Not quite sure what that was. I could, might be easy to even remove the whole mechanism. Probably wouldn't hurt because while I'm messing around in here I might as well get the mech out and give it a clean up really the whole front of the cabinet wants everything taken off it and cleaning all the knobs are dirty so all the cassette deck knobs so I won't have to get them out just to clean them a lot easier out of the thing and ideally you'd get the whole front panel stripped off so you could just soak it and clean it off I'll put them back there because I know I know they're for the tape deck I'll have to hit eject I would think where's the eject lever uh, there probably, yeah, that's it. That should release it from the door. The button, there we go. And we've got a cassette mechanism free. So I'll move this main body out of the way. And here it is, this is a bit more modern than the other. Yeah, I think that gear looks split. A bit more modern than the other silver mechanism I've got here somewhere. It's got rid of the... similar but yeah, a few changes the buttons almost the same yeah, there's quite a few oh this is oh this might be the standard here yeah, from memory this is the standard other plastic deck they used to make 
So they've gone from a silver only one, this one with that, that lever coming up like that. That seems to remind me for the auto stop. This was a, the earlier type of standard deck put in many, many different units. Yeah, these buttons are absolutely disgusting, but corroded even, so I'm not sure how well they'll clean up. But yeah, this was the other deck I couldn't find on anywhere, but looks like I've got one now. It's slipping, but I don't think it's that gear. There should be a clutch. There's another belt. No, I'm not seeing a clutch. Is that actually split or is it just a bit of muck in it? It might just be a bit of muck in it, making it look... Uh, can't see a crack on the front of it. Oh, yeah, no, I think it is just the grease is making it look like that gear split, but it's not actually... Some of the teeth have a bit of muck in them and some don't. I think when they don't, they look like they're actually open. But no, I think that's just got a bit of muck in it, a bit of dried up grease or something. Let's put it into fast forward. Yeah, we've got a bit of slippage there, but it's, there's a bit of torque there. I think when I was in play, it might have. I don't know, it feels like enough to, to do the job. That little clutch is, yeah, the clutch doesn't feel the best when it slips. It's kind of jerking away there a bit. Again, this may not have been used for years. Some bit of rubbish has fallen out of it. That probably wasn't helping. It does feel a little... I can feel a sort of clicking almost. Pulsing in the actual sprocket, so there's something... May just need, there is another bit of muck there, so there's something... Oh no, that might just be the edge in the middle. That feels a little better now, I probably just need it loosening up a bit. But that could even be these gears going back, maybe it's something I'm feeling the vibrations from those. It looks an awful lot like a split, but look, so I think that's just... It's not slipping, so that's what matters. Interesting this deck doesn't seem to have a clutch on the... Must be in there somewhere. There's no obvious clutch on the rewind fast forward. Maybe they have a quicker... Yeah, that does not slip. So that's quite an interesting design. I wonder if their auto stop kicks in quicker or something. And they've used that to do away with a clutch on the rewind fast forward, but anyway. Let's get this motor out. It's only got, oh no, there is a black wire there. I was going to say, I thought I only had a red wire connected. So it's got two wires at the motor switch, but it's also connected to the negative side. So they must need to know that the motor's running or not. Oop, I've dropped the belt off there. Geez, this does have some very small belts, which is good because I just got some small belts off eBay. So I'll be able to try them out and chances are they'll, I won't have the exact size I need even though there's a heap of different sizes and that one screw and it's actually coming loose. So it just sits in, it's been glued a bit. One leg's off. Yeah, they're just little metal parts that go through. That's quite a nice little design. Might need to cut that glue with a knife. Being careful not to cut into any wires or anything. That's got most of it. Come on. Just for that sticky yellow glue there. A bit of elastic, so it's nearly coming. Come on, out you come. There we go. Turn down the belt's holding it. Sounds a little noisy, but they often do. Yeah, I think that might just be a slipping belt. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a little bit of oil on this motor's bearing, just to be sure. But there's that belt. And we also have this tiny, even tinier one. Which doesn't want to come out because it's got itself hooked around uh, by the auto stop or something. How's the capstan spins nice and freely. Always worth a check. It's 
especially in something that hasn't been used in a long time, which I'm assuming this hasn't, but I don't know that for sure. Mech's actually in quite good condition. I will just give that a quick look behind my paintbrush here, give that a quick brush out. Very little dust in there, thankfully. Head's actually pretty clean. Yeah, the caps the caps and has virtually nothing on it, and some of the pinch roll almost looks new, but either that or it's had um, the chromium dioxide type tapes in it, because there's none of the iron ferric oxide stuff looking there. None of that orangey coloured stuff on it, so it's actually in pretty good nick. So again, like I said, a lot of these never had much use. I'm just used for the radio and in this case it's got a TV so maybe they used it more for that than anything else yeah that's pretty good not much else you really need to do with these these are pretty maintenance free mechanisms so yeah the other thing I might do is how do we get these looks like you take a C-clip off and you can slide the thing and all these buttons will come out because I might actually take them off I think and give them a clean a small screwdriver this this may do it there get the old Jesus clip off there not gonna need a small one probably should have done that before I dropped the motor off there's our little clip make sure you put that and that little screw that held the motor on somewhere safe we're not gonna knock them off the bench now that should I guess tap through Uh, maybe I can take that whole piece off. Not sure it's going to make any difference. You think that would just slide out? Hey, it's starting to go. Probably needs a bit of oil on it, ideally, to get it started. Oh, here we go. So we can just pull that out. You can actually undo a couple of little screws on the front here to remove the whole assembly, but there we have a button. A rather disgusting one. These buttons should all be the same, so it shouldn't matter where they went and where they go back to. I have to move the tape heads out of the way a bit. So yeah, they just sit in the bottom here and press on these little levers. But yeah, I think I'll give them a good soak in something. Maybe even some turps or something might, might be a bit harsh on them, but at least in some water, soapy water if nothing else, and try and get the a lot of finger grease and just it's been so much finger grease on there it's obviously been, been a bit damp could have been in a takeaway shop or anything could be actually grease or food or something and it's started corroding which will often eat into the they like a you know uh, what do they call it vapor deposition system or something where they hang the plastic there and then basically vaporize a some sort of metallic chrome or something and then then the actual vapor sticks I think they use static or something to static electricity to attract it or something and it sticks on here and coats it so it is an actual metal coating that's why it's got the verdigris stuff growing on it anyway we'll give those a good clean and I'll see if I can find some belts well while I'm doing this silver I might as well have a look at these do a little review of these eBay belt kits um, they all look to be the same I ordered a couple of different ones from different people they come with these here, yeah, some of these silver, very thin, about one millimeter belts, square section, or they come with these flat belts. Like I say, I did order a few different ones just to see if there's any difference, but they all turn up in basically the same package, I think. I can't read Chinese, so I don't know what that says. That one's just got a different barcode on it. Uh, oh, this was some bigger belts. they more like the VCR size. This is more flat section. I think some of these here, so these flat section kits look a bit different. Maybe these labels are all just to say what factory made them or something. The characters basically look the same. So yeah, so it's yeah, I think they're their wider flat section. They're thinner ones, probably about three millimeter wide, they're more like four or five. And this is more big thick ones, 2 by 2 millimeter. yeah 2 by 2 or says just 2 millimeter. so they're the, they're the sort of ones used in VCRs, big 2 millimeter squared ones. Cassette players normally, the ones I used to buy for the older players, 
standard ones you buy were 1.2 square or 1.4 square these ones are actually quite thin that one's an absolutely tiny little one that one might just make a millimeter and the other one looks even less probably 0.8 or something so i don't want a flat section or a big square section so i've got a couple these kits look to be pretty much the same i think i did end up actually accidentally ordering two of the same kit but they're only, I can't remember what they cost, five dollars a kilo or something, not much including postage and I have to find some scissors to open this I'm hoping, there's quite a few sizes in there, hoping that they'll fit this silver now I don't know what sort of quality these are being Chinese made, you wouldn't know but let's get this kit out. It certainly seems to be a hell of a lot of range of sizes, or either that or there's just a lot of the same size in there. Let's have a look. Let's start. Some of those look fairly close already, but you know, they're definitely going down in size. Even if there's a couple of each, which is even better really, because you tend to use the same sizes all the time. And most of them that you tend to use tend to be these little ones, so they're going down in size quite nicely. Did not mix them up with the old ones. Let's see. That should be smaller, shouldn't it? And then slightly bigger. Yeah, very hard to tell exactly, but you can see they definitely keep going up in size. And then we're getting these big ones, which is almost about the size I'm after. Possibly too big. Yeah, I think those are getting into the too big range. What have we got here? Then we're getting back down again. You don't want a belt that's too much smaller, but you definitely want to take into account that it's bound to have stretched. Hopefully we've got one here getting closer to the size. Well, that one was too big, of course, like I said, they're probably going to miss the size I want. That one's definitely too big, and I think they're even bigger again. So unless there's one still, oh yeah, there are some small ones hiding in here still, by the look of it. I could easily stretch one of these smaller ones, I think. Oh yeah, there's definitely some in between us still down in here. No, actually they're getting bigger, I think. Let's have a look at that one. Had big. What's this one? Yeah, too small. So these ones are the closest by the look of it. Which one's the bigger, if any? About identical, I think. So we do have a bit of a gap in our sizes there. Now that should be the one to go. I can put this one back on because it goes around the capstan. Ideally, I should really clean these pulleys, but they look to be. This deck's in pretty clean condition and the belts haven't deteriorated. So this probably has had a bit of use. Yeah, that's much better. That's I can barely stop that now. Could be a little bit too tight, but I think that's pretty perfect. So now we need a larger one. I don't think we're quite getting big enough yet. Although, what are these ones? They are quite a bit shorter. Let's see if we can find some... More on the size I want, but I bet it's going to jump up and yeah, be too big. <laughs> so I think they're going to... It's almost like they always make them to miss the size you want. It might be a tad smaller, but it's still too big. I think, yeah, it's even bigger than the one I've got, so... Yeah, I think they've skipped the size I want, but again, we can use a smaller one. Yeah, they certainly seem to have, but this one is quite slippy, so it won't hurt to go a bit smaller. So I think that's going to be the one. They're too big, I'll already check them. Anyway, we've got some quite long ones in here as well. I think they do give you the range, what they, what diameters, what circumferences, lengths, they go from and to 
but it's certainly quite a few useful kind of sizes in there that's way too big I guess so yeah you can't really I forget how many belts are actually in here but like I say for the price I mean if I use two out of this kit I could throw the rest away and still probably cheaper than buying them from a normal supplier especially you know if you've got to make a special order and pay postage then it's definitely cheaper than getting them from the normal supplier and yeah as much as I prefer to buy them in Australia here somewhere sometimes the eBay special is the way to go so that belt's an old one that can go in the rubbish for now I can always get it out if I need it which I shouldn't only problem is now I'm probably going to need a bigger bag because I'm not going to get those in the old bag easily so I'm just wondering if I can dribble a little tad of oil down in there uh, I don't think my cotton buds are out here in ice they are so I'll get a bit of light sewing machine type oil and we definitely don't want to get any oil on the pulley Pulley needs to clean anyway so I'll do that after but if I can squash this cotton bud right down and maybe pull it out a bit so I can get it under the pulley that's pretty good and just put a bit of oil on the very end of it just put enough that some will come off again give it a good thorough soaking so there's almost a drip hanging off try and get that down to that motor bearing just get a little bit in there yeah, it's quite saturated probably going to get a little bit on the inside of the pulley but try and get that on the motor with the motor facing upwards just give that a good spin facing that way for a little bit just to try and get a bit of that oil to run down into the bearing a bit even though it's really a bush more than a bearing and shouldn't really need anything on it now I've got to find my methylated spirits which I haven't used for a bit so of course it's vanished I've probably used it on something else there it is. found it but it's empty of course But that's nothing new, it's always empty. Okay. Get the little pump primed up. Use the other end of the clean end of the cotton bud and I'll just put that in the little slot in the faucet right into the slot of the motor pulley and just remove the usual sort of little bit of black muck in there from the old belt and just make sure I remove any oil I might even poke that under the pulley a little bit just to remove any oil from where I had that cotton bud just not right up to the shaft so they can't run back down onto the belt okay I've got our new belt positioning the motor that goes in like that so if we hook that around the pulley try not to get around the shaft since we just put oil on it poke those little bits back in there and then just carefully pop it around there now put our little motor screw back in The holes line up there somewhere. It's sitting down right, doesn't feel quite like it is. Oh, there's a bit of plastic under there, that's why. So the metal doesn't go right down to the metal because there's some sort of plastic bit there. Okay, do that up reasonably tight. Okay, now can I get my finger down there just to check? Well, that belt's going to be a lot tighter than the other. Well, for starters, I can turn the motor no problem now. The other one was starting to slip even without me pressing on the motor shaft so I think we'll call that fixed so it 
with another old belt, we'll chuck it away. Make sure you throw out your old belts because you don't want to accidentally get them mixed up with your new ones and put them in something later on. It might work for a while, but if they're starting to go, there's a fair chance they'll keep going. I mean, this unit must be, what, early to mid-90s or something. So it's a pretty old belt now. Uh, I really need to find a clip -box bag or something to put these in. Super big one, but all I have to do. You want to keep those belts away from dirt and oil and anything like that. So okay, so it looks like we we should have a working mechanism here. If I can just push that into play. Nothing slipping until the actual clutch itself does. Rewind. Yeah, no slippage at all now. So that other belt's fixed that problem. Was a little slippy. And then to fast forward. The same thing here, the actual belt kind of is probably bulging out as a bit of a clutch, if anything. Well, how does the auto stop kick in then? Not sure how that works. So this is a new mechanism, I have to work out how the... I forget how these ones used to kick, because that's got to come up. Yeah, that's, uh... What the hell pushes that up? Doesn't seem to be anything on the reel. Can't be anything on the tape. That is a bit of an odd design, that. So let's see if we put it into rewind and then, yeah, that'll flick it off. Put it into play. Definitely, yeah, that hits the slide bar, that's the same as hitting the stop button, basically. And then it's got nothing to do with the rewind. I think it, ah, oh, oh, something to do with tape tension. Ah, oh, fuck. I vaguely trying to remember what used to cause these to... Ah, yeah, 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 oh, that's that lever there. That's the bugger. That bit on the head there, I think that's about How's that working? Rewind or fast forward? Let's see, yeah, that. When the tape tension gets up, this little lever here should, yeah, that pushes it up. So it's nothing to do with this. I don't know why it even goes up to the reel like that, but. Oh, that's not releasing it. Or maybe. Ah, does that catch into the reel or something? I think if we press that up and turn, you turn the reel, yeah, yeah, that's, that's it, so it has, that comes up, the reel grabs it. <laughs> bit overly complicated, but once you know how it works, though it doesn't seem to operate in, how does it work in rewind fast forward, or does, yeah, well that's a whole other question, maybe it's something completely different. So that's how it works in play, is that lever. What pushes it up in... Hmm. Maybe there's another way it operates in rewind fast forward, but I can't see how. Oh, we've got something here. Now that's just to do with the... Well, maybe just to do with the... idlers no that's not moving at all hang on well, that goes up so it doesn't move and rewind fast forward 
but there's in play that can oh, so that idler comes up so it is just the idler so in play when we get down to the tape the tape tension increases pushes that lever down that thing comes up and it's caught and hit stop I'm not sure how a rewind fast order works on that I'll have to have a look at that later actually one more thing I better do is Clean the heads and tape path, a lot easier while it's out of the machine. Not that there's much on there. It's certainly one of the cleanest tape decks I've ever seen. So I'll say this hasn't played much in here. There is a bit of orangey oxide coming off once you actually start cleaning it, but that capstan's like new almost. The heads, if anything's probably just got a little bit of greasy dust on it, which is maybe eaten into the surface a little bit. Race head doesn't look like it's just touched the tape in its life. And the pin roll is amazingly clean. Just the slightest sign that a tight tape has gone across it. But yeah, it looks like it's only a clean iron oxide -y sort of uh, chromium oxide tapes, but even VCRs, which do have chromium tapes, tend to get a big black layer, which I guess on this would show up in the same sort of way as it does in a VCR, but yeah, there is a bit of a layer of something there. Definitely something coming off, but no, that's pretty pretty good condition. So that's really all that deck needs. It's as clean as. After getting rid of a bit of dust off it, it's actually in quite amazing condition. So yeah, I think it hasn't had much use. It's a shame that the buttons are quite grotty, so someone's definitely pressed these buttons, I'm assuming, but maybe if it was in a takeaway store or somewhere, just having the surface facing upward is enough to get grease and stuff on there. I'll just try giving that a quick clean with a bit of methylated spirits on some paper towel to see if that stuff does come off. Relatively easy, it's certainly not the best. I've ever tried terps on these, I probably should just as an experiment. I mean, it is a metal coating on it, so you would hope it's terps proof because it is metal. But that isn't necessarily the case. We all know. But nothing vented, nothing gained. Seems to be getting into it a bit better. Without any ill effects so far. I don't know this. Yeah, that gets into it a lot better than the turps. Than the meth, I mean. This is the turps. Oh, yeah, that horrible verdigris isn't going to come off an area, I don't think. But at least this, this seems to be getting the greasy stuff off. Uh, yuck, look at it. I don't have high hopes of this thing looking mint, but pretty hard to get a boom box that's mint these days. There are the other ones around. In you go. Got to be a little bit careful using a screwdriver to do this, but if it rips through the paper, you'll probably strip all, or at least scratch all the metal. Yeah, that gets rid of quite a bit of that verdigree, thank God. So they have some hyper coming up half decent. There's nothing worse than dirty stuff all over your buttons. Looks absolutely awful. Yeah, sometimes it eats right through the, the chrome, unfortunately. I say this might need a bit of a soak, and I've got that. I use my fingernail to push it into the grooves. Oh, that's disgusting. Just greasy, dirty muck in there. But yeah, starting to get the original shine back on it. 
may even need a little bit of cutting compound or something, maybe just car cutting compound or something just to give it a slight polish. Obviously these layers are not very thick so you've got to be super careful. Wouldn't take much to just cut the whole thing right off. Right back to bare plastic I wouldn't think. But that is a massive improvement over how grotty it is at the start. Oh, just getting that horrible verdigris stuff off there. Looks a ton better. I think that's eating right through the metal ball, look at it. So I think we're already down to plastic in places. But if it cleans up half decent I'll be happy. Yeah, I mean, that's already a million times better than what it was. I probably should really be using a toothbrush or something, but I hate stuff around for ages, so yeah, I think the plastic uh, chrome coating still there. So that was just a very thick muck. That's actually come up quite nice. So yeah, a little bit risky using a screwdriver, but sometimes if you can't be bothered waiting forever, you can just sort of. I guess I probably should really soak it. But if you can't be bothered fiddling around forever, you can just give it a bit of a go and just careful. I guess it's a bit of an acquired touch of how much you can get away with. I've done enough fiddling around all this sort of stuff in the past to know what I can pretty well get away with without breaking anything, scratching anything, destroying anything, while spending the minimum amount of time on it. You know, with old doing up second hand goods and that, you'd, you want to get it cleaned as quick as you can. And you know, not as important as with the customer's unit because people just buy a second hand thing anyway, they expect it to be a little worn and stuff. So it didn't matter if you did a, a tiny bit of scratches or something because generally they had scratches and stuff on them anyway. So a tiny little bit more wasn't the end of the world, but yeah, you wouldn't. You'd certainly take your time if it was a customer's bit of equipment. But yeah, with your own stuff, you sort of learn the quickest ways to just get it cleaned up and in a respectable state ready for sale like same with this I might just I'll probably just end up putting this unit on a shelf or something and I'll probably get covered in dust and stuff anyway just be another dust collector so it's not going to be perfect anyway but yeah I might use a little bit of cutting compound I think yeah as it dries out it goes a little bit dull again but man, that's a ton better. There's still a little bit of verdigree in these little grippy bits. That's a heap better than it was. Doesn't look actually disgusting anymore. Just a bit dirty, but not outright repulsive. Okay, found some cutting compound. Got a bit of the old flannelette pyjama. Got the nicest, softest stuff to do this with. Let's see if I can... Polish up a bit better. Yeah, I can see the copper there, so that one of those marks is. I thought it was dirt before, but it has already eaten through the top layer by the look of it. I have a bit of coppery coloured stuff in the chrome. Not sure if it's a different coating or. I don't, I don't know what chrome is, is it? chrome is probably made up of copper and something else, I'm not sure. Or is it an actual, I think chromium is an actual element, so I don't know. But whether this is actual chrome or just is meant to look like a chrome finish, they could use anything, as long as it's shiny and silver. Certainly going to come up better than before. I 
think. Where's that tiny little screwdriver? I might try and gently scrape down in there. Yeah, it's definitely got some muck in there. And a bit of verdigris left, so if I can just get right down in the bottom, but I'm not going too hard on it. Try and get that green muck out of there. Right down in that corner, there's a little bit more of something built up on there. Tiny bits down in there. Even a knife blade could probably go down in here a bit and it's hard to see what you're actually doing. Yeah, there's something definitely coming off. Problem is if it's under a layer of grease and that, yeah, very hard to get off without actually scraping it off. I still think it's got a bit of a. I could use some methyl or something. Actually, get all the polish off it. And yeah, it's certainly not going to be mint condition. Yeah, compared to that, it's not an awful lot of difference. That's oh, definitely a lot brighter though, and it has probably got removed 50% of the... Oh uh, yeah, like this piece here is now probably back to factory, although that's partly because I've got my fingerprints on there, but... Yeah, it's definitely taken some of these sort of bits of what I think are corrosion off. The front's still not the best. And that side's probably got half as much as it used to. So I might keep going with a bit more cut and polish. See if it's possible to remove that. Yeah, there's all like little, I don't know if they're pits or lumps of muck on there. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get rid of all of that. There's quite a few scratches on there when you really start looking at it. Not very fine ones, but probably from people's fingernails or something. I guess another thing that could be tried on here is something like Brasso. Brasso definitely cuts into this sort of stuff that probably even a bit harsher than the cutting compound, I don't know. That dries a bit. That's significantly better than the other one, though the front's kind of similar. There's a lot more shine there, the, a lot less dirty patches than there was, but yeah, big bit of coppery stuff there where it's cut right through. That was already on there before I started. I was trying to clean it off, but it turns out it's actually stuff, so yeah, it's got almost do with a, a recoat. At least I've scraped most of that verdigris out of there. The knife blade will get right down in the very bottom of that because there is a little bit of green muck in there. Probably a bit of a brutal way to do it, but I don't really want to spend all day on this. And like I said, it is just for me. Like from a distance, I think that'll look quite respectable actually. Compared to what it was. Oh yeah, that's actually quite good. And you won't see those sides, I don't think. I can't remember what, what part of it sticks out, but I think we can see, yeah, probably not that, probably just this top and a bit of the front. Yeah, I think that would be quite good. Certainly compared to what it was, that's got a nice silvery shine on it now. And it's far from perfect when you look at it up close, but... But I think I can live with that. It's actually in some ways better than I actually expected to get out of this because it looked like I actually thought the keys would probably be in a lot worse condition you know, looking at it on eBay and now look, and looking at it in the flesh I still didn't think it was going to come up real great 
but it actually looked worse in the pictures, I think, than it did in life. I'm not going out of the box, but I still didn't think I'd get quite as much off as seems to be coming off. And like I say, 50% or more of this that I'm actually cleaning is probably going to be hidden out of view once it's in the machine anyway. So there's no use getting too excited about all these flat surfaces on the sides and stuff. It's just I wanted to get the worst of the dirt off them. Because when one button's pressed, the one next to it's going to show a bit. But if you're not using it, I don't think you'll even see them. Or not any great deal of them enough to really see how bad they are. Oh, that's just grease and filth in there. Yeah, these little grips are just full of muck. But yeah, thankfully the verde grease stuff seems to be just on the the surface. It's just sort of a growth. It's, it hasn't eaten right into it. Or it hasn't occurred where something has eaten right into it and converted all the chromium plating into corrosion. That's actually amazingly good. I think there's still a slight bit of dirt there, but no green. No verdigree at all. Yeah, it's got a little bit of... You're right in those corners, it's very hard to wipe it out any other way than scrape it out. That's come up quite nice. Could probably do a little bit more going over. There's probably a million different methods of how to do this, but this is just one that occurred to me, so I'll give this a go. Yeah, front, I think that front surface is the most important, and the top surface. Yeah, it's, I think that'll be quite acceptable, and like I said, it's much better than it was. Give that a quick clean off. A bit of metho and just get all the polish off. Yeah, it's got substantially more shine. Yeah, so sort of cleanliness on it. More consistency of plain silver rather than sort of patches of stuff. Okay, I've got the unit back together. So I'll give it a bit of a play and see what it's like. Well, at least it sounds like it's probably the right speed now. Possibly a bit of wow there. Yep, so audio seems to be pretty good. There's maybe a little bit of wow in it. But um, other than that, it seems pretty good. I probably should do a speed check on this just to make sure the motor is running at the right speed, but it sounds like it's okay. Uh, next thing will be to fit a knob back on here and try the other functions out. That's the radio. And we've got no antenna hooked up at the moment. And for Olivia with driver's license, now for number one is glass animals with waves, which I'll be playing in a minute. Now for the album chart, starting at number 10, architect for those that wish to exist. Number nine, a day to remember, brand new one with the week, your weekend. Number eight, Billy Irish will be... Second one for Melbourne. When we know what happens to them, if and when they do, I mean, I want to... Yeah, well, that seems to be working. And yes, we have a CRT up. Although I can't really check the tuning on this because there's no analog signals, but the tuning is... I'll have to show that after. But I can see we must be on, what are we on, VHF high. Picking up probably what's an FM radio station or something as we go through. It's... 
something flicking up on the screen so at least it seems to be running okay uh, where are that brightness and stuff for this All on the back here that's the contrast I think brightness probably vertical hole but those pots seem to be working all right Oops, careful got these knobs sticking up here now but yeah the tape seems to be a goer again probably as good as it ever was though maybe a little bit of wow though I don't know how good this actual cassette is that could have been affected by something over the years and it made a lot of me oh probably down the wrong way anyway. Definitely a bit of wow on that, I think. When you hear the piano, so I'll have to try the test tape in it. Oh, yeah. Definitely hear a bit of wow on that. wobbling a bit so that's a bad sign it could actually be the motor in it and when the capstan was spinning really free so it's most likely going to be the actual motor itself I think which I don't think I've got any spare cassette motors now so I think I might give that a miss at least it's mostly running for the moment and I managed to get it fairly clean so I might actually just clean that top a little bit more and, and put it back together. I wouldn't mind actually giving this TV a clean as far as the actual tube goes. So I might have a look at how much trouble it is to take the tube out of the cabinet. So I'll just release these controls. That's all the audio controls. And we've got a little, little wrap here around the wires. Yeah, it looks like if we take those that bracket out and those two screws that'll release the actual picture tube on one side and there's another couple of screws there and the next question so there's that little bracket is holding the circuit board look like there's a couple of screws there are they part of the case I think they might be holding the, the circuit board in if I can do it without bumping the camera uh, they seem to be going into some sort of metal bracket. Because that looks like that's moulded. Moulded onto the case, I think, that bit of black plastic. But I could be wrong about that. Oh, yeah, that's, I don't think we even need to take that metal bracket off. That's good, because that'll get these... There's also some dirty buttons on the front here I want to clean. So that's the circuit board loose. Yes, that's basically loose now. Now, how's this connected into the tuning of the TVs? The next, oh, there's an actual potentiometer on the. There's a little potentiometer down in here, must. Um, was well, 100k so that probably just feeds tuning that's being a very cap i assume this little tuner modules very cap diode so that would just uh, be a voltage 0 to 30 volts or something like that that goes through that pot which is connected to the the tuning knob and the, the tuning dial via a dial cord so i reckon that's all that's going on there we've got some other little circuit board there what does that go through to that is the headphone socket I think I might pull that out as well just to get it out of the way. That looks like it's in line with the speaker loops connected to it. I'm trying to remember which screw. That's a longish plastic screw there. I'll put that with the bracket so we know that went with that. I can actually unplug that here. I might just get that out of the way a bit. And I probably don't need to actually disconnect the tube just got to be a little bit careful with it because it's wouldn't take much to break the neck off this one oops seeing 
find something there. Just make a note we've got an earth connection on that end. That's probably earthing the aqua dag, so I want to make sure that goes back in there. Aqua dag being the coating on this black coating on the back of the tube. Oops, we've got a little copper connection there as well that went with this bracket or clamp or whatever you want to call it. Yes, that's actually connected, so that goes back to the neck board. Yeah, so this one doesn't actually connect to the tube, to the aqua dag. It looks like this little copper, little fingered copper bit here. Does that and then goes through the bracket on one end, through that big metal plate. Back up through the wire here, most likely. So I think I might be better off just taking that neck board off so I've not got any pressure there. Tiny little thing that it is. And I guess we could even take the little older cap off. I should really discharge that, but it hasn't been used for a while, so I think it's fairly safe not to give me a shock. Now I've got one more little bracket to go here. just want to clean the dust off probably hasn't got much on it but just the inside of the perspex on the front and the front of the tube it's bound to have a little bit of dirt on it just given the age of everything and that's just another little bracket with a little bit of rubber on it just as a soft mount for the tube still with the yoke plugged in does that unplug it does and it comes out easy well, there's a tiny little pitcher tube get the focus a bit better. I'll move this out of the way. So yeah, very tiny. What is a Hokutu? 100 GB4. Made by Hokutu Japan. And the serial enough. So there's a tiny little tube. Actually it weighs quite a bit considering, but it's got as much glass in it as any other, I guess. Just a bit smaller than the usual. So I'll get a bit of paper towel and just try and wipe off the worst of any coating that's on there, it's going to have a fine coating of dust or something on it after all this time, but looks like it's pretty clean just here, just the slightest bit on there. And let's see if I can get down out of this, like this perspex screen is, and just give it a quick. Yeah, it's just the slightest bit of brown stuff coming off. I don't know if I can get under the edges there and try and. I don't want to leave part of it dirty. A bit more metho on there. Get that nice and wet and just get it right to the edges under the little surround bit there. Because nothing worse than having a bit of a coating of dust or anything on your tube. Very little came out, so I'm surprised it's so clean given how dirty this unit was generally. Um wonder if I should take that tuning dial out as well because that knob on that is really dirty and I've also got, oh, I've got the tube out of the way I've got these buttons on the front here which are quite hard to access I mean small mount sticking out when it's all together so I might get a bit of car cut and polish onto that I don't like pulling these off the switches if I can help it because they're quite tight but I don't want to put too much pressure on them while they're on the switches either because there's a risk you'll break them off. This stuff's cleaning off quite well anyway. There's a little bit of brown muck on the top there. If I had to get down in between them, I might have to take some of these off. Just got to be very careful like actually taking them off these switches probably wants a screwdriver or something to do it because they're quite tight fitting ah yeah that's getting it you can just start prise them off because these shafts on the, this type of switch can break quite easily these ones aren't particularly long so they mightn't be too bad but you've got to be very cautious with these old type switches that doesn't want to fit in between the two and that does not want to come off 
the first one came off reasonably easy, but... Oh, there we go. Some of these may have even been glued on. Looks like they've got something under there. Yeah, I think they might have... Oh, it could have just been muck that's got in there over the years. As long as I can get two off, I should, shouldn't have any problem cleaning the third. It's definitely got some yellow stuff, so I reckon they've glued them on a bit. So yeah, quite dirty, these switches. Old buttons that go on the switches. It'll really make the unit look better, and I can probably flip this over and clean around the holes they come through as well while they're out of the holes. So it makes it a lot easier. That's a ton better than it was. I might give that a bit of cut and polish just to finish it off. Yeah, these are at least in a bit better condition underneath the dirt than I was expecting. Probably should give these switches a squirt of contact cleaner while I've got them out as well. Got access to them. Focus back, didn't help. So yeah, I've got a bit of cut and polish on this rag. We'll, I'll just go over these and try and get the bit that sticks out through the front. I'll polish off a bit of the markings and stuff on that. Yeah, top of it's in fairly poor condition where there was a lot of grease sitting on it. But should look at half decent. It's certainly a lot better than it was. And it'll do the job for me as just a bit of a display piece, a bit of a novelty thing. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. stuff on there of which is a bit this unit's likely going on 30 odd years old so did I do that one? I can't remember I think I did so it's bound to be a bit dirty now just try and get these back on again very gently push it home Hopefully these are all the same. Yeah, shame you can't turn this front bit around so that the the bottom or something is upwards because these have got quite a bit of scratching. They've probably been rubbing on the on the actual front panel as they've been used. So it has scraped the metal a bit, but at least all the dirt's gone off that. And just give it a squirt in the top of these your contact cleaner and give them a bit of a working and while this is out might as well check it what the soldering and stuff is like but it looks to be pretty good yeah no sign of dry joints or anything that I can see Probably looks about as good as the day it was made from the look of that. It's 
doesn't look to have had a lot of use, it hasn't been running hot or anything. No obvious sign of anything like that. Now the other thing I was thinking of doing is seeing if I can get this get a short screwdriver on it. Get this tuning dial out without messing that up. Because putting dial cords back on is a real pain. So I definitely don't want to end up doing that. That is going to come out, I think. I'm, just, I'm going to have to take that little bracket off the corner. And that does go under the other screw as well, then. Now, am I going to have to take the whole radio board out? Oh, uh, so that sits into a... If I can get this screw out... Doesn't want to come out though. Yeah, you might have to take the radio board because it sort of slots in. And there's just enough room to get it out. Yeah, because this knob on the, the, the TV tuning, you can see there's oh, a real dirty patch there. I did scrape some of the muck off it. That might actually come off. That's on a shaft, I think. Yeah, there we go. Just the old D-shaped potentiometer type shaft. Well, I won't put that on the screen because I don't want to make that dirty or scratch it or anything. So this one might be a job for a toothbrush or something. I've got to at least get that face of it clean, which I don't know. I don't think any of that even shows, but... This is going to need a good scrub, maybe with a bit of turps or something. Uh, I do have a toothbrush somewhere, but who knows where it is these days. No sign of it anywhere. Oh, well, there it is. Hiding under the oscilloscope. a bit of terps on this which could potentially be a little harsh on the surface depending how well this knob is coated certainly getting a bit of muck off it get that fair bit on there I might be able to scrub the terps in a bit Getting some of that muck off there. Yeah, parts of it are quite bad though. It's a shame it's not a fluted shaft on this. I could probably face the knob so that if there's a cleaner side or whatever, so that sticks out more. I don't know if it rotates a full way around during the tuning, but definitely one part of it's been sitting out, suggesting they haven't used the TV much, or they've always used it on the same channel. Because one part of this has been out facing the world and got a lot of the greasy stuff on and verdigris on it. But yeah, the main part of it's coming up half decent. That's quite good. Uh, one thing I could try. I actually, again, could risk it being a bit harsh, but I might try a little bit of scourer pad on it. I'm probably going to have to get a knife or something onto it anyway to get those bits out of the slots. Like, you've got to be a little careful with these. Because they are quite abrasive. So I'll just give it a light. Going over there. That's certainly a ton better than it was. But yeah, this one section's quite dirty and got verdigris and stuff in it, so I'm not sure how that's going to come up. Probably going to 
Take the knife and just run it down and try and clean out that green verdigris stuff. Bit hard to see where the actual muck is, that's just a little loose bit. I think that's might even be quite good as it is. Certainly a lot better than it was. Yeah, there's a couple of little bits of dirt I can scrape out with a knife. At least it'll loosen. Yeah, that's actually, I mean, it's quite silver now, so that's a start. It's probably been a bit, little bit pedantic about it, worrying about every last little bit. You'd be lucky to get any of these knobs. I want to get this old completely clean again and like new. Unless the unit's been really unused and kept clean. Yeah, it's a lot of rot in the bottom of these little spline things. Don't know if I'm going to get much better than that. I'll just give it another good dose of terps now that I've worked some of that loose. Toothbrush even is going to do an awful lot with it, but give it a bit of a go. Yeah, it might be taking a little bit out. Yeah, that's, that's a lot better than it was. to that copper colour so we've lost a little bit of coating there by the look of it. it seems to be lots of little tiny bits of verdigris or something in there yeah, that was the bad patch there I think yeah I think some of it has eaten right through leaving a bit of a copper colour but that's generally not too bad yeah I think this is about as good as I can get it I mean you could actually spray paint it again or something, get it recoated in, in some way. I don't know how good the chrome paints are these days. A lot of them never used to be real good. They said they were chrome, but never proper shine on them like the real thing. But I think that'll do for that. Where's our little pointer? Oh, I've got this apart. It might be, there's a bit of dirt there. Might be worth checking the pointer and... I don't think I can do much with the window. That's probably behind the same window as the TV, maybe. But just, yeah, be careful not to leave any fingerprints or anything on this paint and just get any dust off it. Wind it down a bit. That's not a good sign. Why is that not turning? Yeah, because it feels quite stiff as well. I'm not sure it should be quite that tight. Well, I guess that's probably the... Yeah, it doesn't seem to want to... I haven't put any turps on that, have I? Or is it my fingers touching it? No. Oh, that's interesting, because that's the end of the pot. The pot's what determines the end of the... Or is it? No, no, it's turning. It's just, yeah, something's very tight. Maybe the pot itself. I'm glad I noticed that while I had it a bit, because I don't think I actually tried tuning it. This probably hasn't been touched in a long time. That could be the pot itself. Oh god, I don't want to have to take the um, take the dial cord off. But something here is very stiff. That pulley's alright. That pulley's alright. That one's hard to tell. I'm guessing it's probably okay. Well, it slides up and down nicely, so there's a good chance it turns as well. 
So that's the three pulleys, so the only thing left is this actual knob bit itself. And considering that's turning okay and the cord's slipping on it, I would suggest either that's got a bit of grease or something on it, or that this pot is more likely the... I wonder if I can get that off that pot without... out popping any of the dial cord off. That doesn't look like a fun thing to do, but... It may have to happen. If I can do it without it suddenly flicking off. Yeah, here we go. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think I can really without. <sighs> I could try and push it off a bit, I guess, and get some oil on the pot shaft. Without it actually removing the. Yeah, because it doesn't matter if we get a bit of oil on the back of the pulley or something, that's not going to worry anything. I've got to get into the shaft of that potentiometer. Let me see if that fixes it. But it's not uncommon for something that hasn't... for a pot that hasn't been used for the actual shaft to go tight on it. I'll push that back in just to be so so I'm not winding. Oh, that's still slipping. Do it by hand, I guess. See if I can work it a bit freer. Is that bully turning? I can't even tell. Doesn't seem to be getting any easier. It's amazingly tight. I can barely turn that by hand. Oh. I think that pot's all and truly... I hate putting RP7 anywhere near a potentiometer, but I might have to in this one. Or, you know, WD-40, any of those things, they're not normally a good good way to clean the contacts in a pot, but as far as freeing up a seized shaft, they're all right. Yeah, I'm not sure I could use that switch clean or lubricant. I'm not sure it's really made for it. I might just see if I can give a slight squirt of... Yeah, so these RP7. Doesn't seem to be making any difference. Oh man, that is tight. I really should make sure I haven't got any on my hands before I touch that coil at the cord, I guess. Well, that might be slowly getting a little looser. I've got it on the other finger, I've got to be careful where I put that. Because okay, it's all, well, it's run down there, hasn't it? That's no good. That wasn't the smartest idea, or at least the cord there probably isn't used for much. Yeah, it's got onto the little indicator bit and the cord there, so I should have thought that through a little bit better, but. You really want to try and keep it off the dial cord, but really the only bit it can slip on is that anyway, I think, so, because the ends of it are on the, the pulley on the pot, the other bits just go around the little pulleys, so that they're meant to slip, or at least make the pulleys turn, so if it slips on it, it's not really going to matter. Man, yeah, no, that is surprisingly tight. But, you know, there is a risk it may not do the cord much good either. Yeah, it's still tight as. It does feel like it's a little bit better, but it's still way too tight. So I think all I can do is get a focus here. We've got one, two... Three, four turns on the, the knob, or the bit on the back of the knob. Comes up around that pulley, up around there. 
Oh, it goes under the... Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, that's a bit insane. That seems to go under the other string, which it shouldn't. This string comes across here. Back on here. Well, that's probably a problem. <laughs> Maybe that's what's wrong with it. Oh no, has it gone back? Oh no. Well, maybe it was a little bit under, but anyway, so this bit back from the knob comes back around above the other one. And yeah, back to the spring. The other one just goes from the spring under the that one back to there. So, unfortunately, I may have to actually remove this. The only other possibility is if I can lift it a bit and get the pot undone, but you might be able to do it. Which one is the nut day? I reckon I might be able to, but then what's it, where is it going to sit when I take the pot out is the next problem. Yeah, that's, I think the grease is dried up there because even the nut is Feels like it's got something gooey holding it on there. So that is a real pain. Okay, the nuts off the pot, I think. Yeah, there we go. So we got the pot out. Now I really want something I can shove back in there. Just to hold that in place for the moment. Okay, I'll see what I can use to just hold this pulley. I just think of one of these um, DC type plugs. I've got a few DC adapters here. It's short and that's about the right diameter. If I can get it off this silly rubber thing it's on. Yeah, it might do just to put that to one side and hope to hell it all stays together. Oh yeah, that pot's as stiff as. may even have to dismantle the pot. Get the focus back again. Yeah, that pot's absolutely see, so that's one problem they didn't tell me it had. But if they didn't try to tune it in, they wouldn't have noticed. So this pot shaft's actually thinner. That doesn't just pull through. I'm not sure how they do that. They must clip it on. So I don't know if opening that's going to help. We could take the back of the pot off. Yeah, I thought that used to now, but I think it can slide off. So I might just have to do a bit more RP7 here. Now that I've got this away from dial cores and stuff, I'm quite happy to spray a bit onto it. Just use this bit of paper towel to get the excess. Uh, of course, all my pliers have gone missing. with some pliers but yeah the grease is well and truly all dried up in this thing so whether we can get it free or not is a whole other problem don't think it's really freeing up much yeah, now it's starting to go maybe Stuff's meant to penetrate, but whether it does, I think it's basically just about petrol and not much else in there anyway. So it's if it gets on that grease, it should pretty much eat it away. Hopefully, dissolve it and not doing the splines much good using pliers on this. I probably should find a knob. I really, want a big volume knob off an amp or something to do it. It's getting a little better, but I wouldn't call it much good yet. So that grease is it. Oh man, now we're starting to... I can just turn it by hand, which is more than I could do before. So I think we're dissolving that grease. It's 
still damn tight though. I'm getting this filth all over me now. Where's my little screwdriver? I went to have a look inside this pot. You can actually bend these little tabs up on the front and take the back of it off, and the little circuit board I think should come out. It may not, it depends how this shaft's attached. Once upon a time, I'd probably have another pot I'd pulled out of some other old TV that I could put in it, but these are never really a standard electronic shop type part. But I've chucked all that stuff out now, so I'm just going to have to try and do the best I can with this one. Okay, there's the back, so the marking goes up there. Ah, uh, yeah, the actual. Oops, now oh, that's the bit shifting with it. Yeah, the actual shaft comes through this plastic bit and is in sort of being punched or something to, to fix it in place. Now this other bit's moved and I don't think it wants to go back. I don't know how that's what's holding that out. And there's the pot. Oh, okay. The whole thing's rotating randomly. It doesn't want to go back where I want it to go back to. Of course. Well, maybe that, you know, I don't think it was on an angle. Oh, wait, what do we got? We've got a little bit there that. Yeah, it's an old, oh, yeah, they go into these little, little holes in the front board. Gotcha. Now to try and get that back in place without cracking anything. Uh, this basically a bit of a circuit board there that is not very strong. Not that I probably should be worrying that much because I've got to still got to try and work out how to get this loose. Yeah, other than I mean, not real good design. In theory, I could squeeze on that with some side cutters or something, and actually, I'm probably going to have to, I think, take the risk. But it's probably going to break off, is what I'm worried about, because it's only diecast aluminium or zinc or something. Yeah, it's starting to break. They're only really a one use thing. Possibly you could glue it back on there or something. I mean, once the case is back together, it probably kind of holds itself in place. Anyway. Yeah, what a... What a horrible thing. drill it out or something, but then you'd have absolutely nothing to put back together. <sighs> Not the sort of thing you want to be trying to fix. And that is the problem with all this old stuff now, there's no parts available for it, so you've got to try and recondition the original bits. Yeah, this is the sort of thing you really don't want to come across. Uh, that really doesn't want to work, does it? And I don't want to try and force the plastic off until I'm sure this is out of the way. I really can't grip on it much, so I can't bend it back in. I think I'm just going to have to try and even break it off just to get it out of the way. because I can't risk breaking the plastic part because then we definitely won't have a pot at all <laughs> my question is can I prise this off now without breaking anything and that's yeah, it's not wanting to come yeah, that's definitely not feeling like it's going to come <laughs> it's 
This thing must be quite well bent out, unfortunately. I was unable to get this metal bit on the back off enough to slide the plastic off without risking breaking it, but what I thought is I pulled, pulled the shaft slightly forward it, while holding this thread a bit back. That opened up a little gap, so I sprayed some RP7 in there, and that instantly just freed it right up. So that's obviously got in there and got rid of that grease. So I might have to put a little bit of oil or something on there, but at least that's that's solved that problem. So it's just a matter of pulling the pot shaft away from the body bit, where the thread, where the nut holds the pot to the TV, and it almost instantly got the RP7 down in there and it dissolved whatever was causing the stickiness just like that that's unbelievable how quick it happens so let's say I was trying to pull the pot to bits any more than well, I probably don't know if I had to even take the back off probably not probably could have just pulled on that shaft a bit so that's a new one I don't think I've ever tried that before but that certainly did the job and I'd say with that RP7 stuff should, I'd say it's petroleum based, I think, so that should dissolve that greasy muck out of existence. It's just yeah, free as now. It's amazing how quick that just went from seized up to working again. So I'll see if we can bend these tabs back on. Just get them over the edge and squash them down. Just being careful, there's a little bit of circuit boardy stuff in there. Does look a little bent actually, but don't want to put too much pressure and break that bit off. Yeah, just, this needs to be fairly tightly put back together. But yeah, it's just amazing, just free, free as a bird now. I hope I've got those wipers in the right the yeah, I don't think it may. I don't think you can get it out of whack. The pot could turn right round when I had the case off, but it's possible I got it in the wrong spot. It must bang against that little tab there or something. Yeah, I can see something hitting that. So hopefully it's good. <laughs> hopefully the wiper is actually on the potentiometer parts there, but what I might do is just let that cotton bud go. Put a bit of fresh oil on that. Almost probably could even drip a bit down there, straight out of the bottle, I guess. Put a little oil while pulling that back and forwards a bit, and just we should have a little bit of oil down the shaft then, just to keep it lubed. Try and remove all this RP7 muck off it. Put on the cable. Horrible stuff to get on your hands, but we should remove all the grease nicely. Now, what was I thinking? I was thinking I probably should put some actual proper contact cleaner in there and switch cleaner lubricant. But yeah, that's that's got no friction. Oh, I'm not sure it should even be that loose, which worries me a little bit, but it'll probably be right. Now. Gotta carefully pick this thing back up with a dial cord on it. And we're losing our little dial pointer. I better clean that off while I think of it. And while it's hanging off a bit. Of course, I only think of it after I pick it up. Just trying to remove that RP7 I got on there before. Well, I wish I knew you just do it this way in the first place, but anyway. Get it all off that pointer there. Now try and get that pointer back in place. Now, remove our little socket that was holding things together. Where'd that pot go? So it's got a little tab where it has to go. So, oh, now the next problem is going to be this pot's going to be potentially a mile out. So I'm going to have to wind it 
ever so carefully to get the get the pointer. I don't know if the pointer will stop without a pot on it. That's the other problem. God, <laughs> this is probably going to end up a little bit out of whack. I'll wind the pointer roughly to one end. Oh, where's my? Oh, I've moved this now. That's no good. That's why it's on the end there. But yeah, now I need to get the pot. Where are we? We're at. So it's anti-clockwise, looking this way, so the pot's got to go yeah, fully that way. So if I put the pot at one end and the pointer at roughly one end, where I think it is, and then we start sliding the pot back in, I think it's going back in, yes it is. It doesn't really want to go on, the spines must be slightly out of alignment there. Ah. Yeah, mongrel must have gone in slightly. Ooh, careful. <laughs> Make sure we get the nut around the pot shaft. Ah, these things always have to turn pear shaped. Ah, if only we had three hands, it'd make life a lot easier. Okay, we've got the nut there. That's still at one end. I just have to fiddle around see if I can. Oh, it might be that I've messed those splines up a bit with the pliers and made them a bit rough. And it doesn't want to slide back on. Yeah, it's starting to go. I won't go too far because I need to get the nut tightened up again. I need to go a little bit more so I don't risk the cord going off. Oh, I just know it's going to suddenly slide on and go the full way. Oh, my luck. It's sitting on a funny angle. That's alright. Yeah, where's my pliers gone? Well, that's a bit of unexpected, annoying work to have to do. But better to find it when you've got it in pieces. Damn, washer doesn't want to go on. Get on there, that's better separate the washer from the nut and I might have a chance of getting the nut on. Ah, look at that, that's going on. Yeah, that's in the right spot. Oh, that circuit board's pushing up a bit. I wonder if that's why it's Looks a bit bent that pot, that's a bit of a silly design. They've made it so the circuit board butts into the... That can't have been like that, surely. Well, the pot has the little hole there, I think they've made it that way. Would explain why the board and the pot's bent, they've got a little notch bit sticking out there. Actually, we've got dry joints on this too now by the look of it. That's probably my doing. I wouldn't have thought that bit of circuit board should stick out like that. I'm just going to take the edge of that off because that's not a very good idea having that much of a bend on the circuit board in the pot. It's a bit better. Yeah, that gives it a bit of space. So, yeah, it's, it's still hanging up because it's obviously been in that position for so long. Now, can I get this back on? It really doesn't want to go back on for some reason. There's always something, like I say, those splines in the pliers might have bent a bit, got a bit rough or something. So I'll see if I can very gently just, yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Probably just go a little bit more. Okay. Right. Why am I going past the end now? Oh, don't tell me I did that pot to the wrong end. No, oh, you've got to be kidding me. Could have sworn I had that the right way around, but... <laughs> oh, that's the fun you have. That's crazy. I did turn it to the right end, I thought. Of course, now this is so tight, I'm probably not going to get it off again. Yeah, 
they both rotated in the same direction, I thought, but there you go. Wife has other plans. At least it comes apart easy. Yeah, can I get the rest of it apart though? Yeah, there we go, it came off a lot easier than it went on. So right up, let me just check this again. So it's roughly at the end, and that's turning that way. That's turning, and that is the wrong way. How on earth did I mess that up, but anyway. Sometimes you visualise things backwards. I guess I should have checked that before I fully put it back together. Okay, let's try it. Pots there. And yeah, that's what I should have really double check, but no, for some reason I visualised it opposite to what I should have. At least I can check it while it's here and see if it roughly ends in the same. Yeah, now that's turning the pots, that's hit the end, so I am a little bit out anyway. It obviously doesn't quite go that far, which is annoying. Uh, that's it. Pots out, so I've hit the end, so let's wind that just ever so slightly further that way. About there, I think. Ah. Uh, now the wire's getting caught up. Okay, let's try again. So that's uh, what I've actually gone too far. So it goes here to the way there. Less than 10 mil, I think, off. I'll probably find out it's asymmetrical or something anyway. The way it fits in the dial, yeah, that's about that's certainly centered. I've got that pretty much perfectly centered, but like I said, it depends if the the window for the dial and the TV's centered. But anyway, I'm sure it'll be close enough. Is that screwdriver? I'm spinning this nut, and yet thankfully it's took to the thread just to get it started. Just trying to do it with a pair of pliers down that hole, just it's going to hold it at a weird angle. You'll never get the thread started. Well, you might, but it's going to be fiddly to say the least, I would think. You might luck it. Do it up nice and tight. Yeah, that's pushing on a bit more. A bit better by hand now. So, that's the bottom. That's the top, and there's something like a good distance from the ends. And I might just get that one more clean. Looks like there might still be a bit of oily residue from the RP7, and I've probably had my sweaty hands all over it. Oh, that mess there? Yeah, that's looking better. And there's a little bit of RP7 on the pointer steel. I'm going to say just give this cord a good clean. Now yeah, that knob's come up fairly clean. Oh, it's a good thing I pulled that out then, because otherwise I would have been cursing when I put it all back together. And found out the pot was seized. Yeah, that might be a little bit off, not quite symmetrical, but anyway. It'll give a rough idea of where you tuned on the dial. I mean, with this sort of tuner you just keep tuning through to or whatever you're trying to pick up shows up anyway. Um, do I need to... Let's see if there's anything I need to clean, like holes on the front. Careful. Yeah, those holes around those buttons could do with a, a clean. Just poke it through the hole and get, get the inside of the hole. Any muck on there cleaned out while you... Got the switches out. A 
little white dot there. I wonder if that's on the outside or the inside. And clean room the tuning hole. It's pretty good anyway. Oh yeah, there's a bit of grease actually on the front here that I couldn't get under the buttons very easily, so I'll get rid of that. And maybe just above them as well. Well, that's actually taken a little bit of the paint off. It's not the best to paint on this one. On this aluminium. Yeah, it's just starting all along there. Seems to come off with the slightest rub, so... I won't go any further with that. Yeah, there's a couple of little specks of dust just... sitting in there. So now I need to get the tuning dial in and dial cord assembly yes yeah, so that's a, a little bit of muck down under that knob where it goes to I'm not get that out dust and stuff See if I can get it back in. Oh, dry joints on the pot. I better do that before I me working on that. Oh yeah, they're very dry at the moment. Me moving that board around's started fracturing the solder joints. Always something to check if you've been moving a pot or something like that around. That's better. Definitely don't want to put that back in without doing that. This from the board, that's in 602. What is in the way there? Something seems to be. There's like nothing there, but it's catching on something. Oh, it's just, a, just this knob, I think it's just a funny way to go in. Damn, what a silly sort of. Way to go in there. Yeah, the metalwork hits before the knob can sort of. And even if I take the circuit board out, on there it goes, it's starting to go. So it looks like you've got to get it upright, then slide it across. I was trying to slide it in before it was ready to go. So we can put our connection. Oh, that's the speaker on here. I better make a note because the speaker's also got a three way connector. CN602 again. Circuit board goes over this side. I'll better put the screws. Dial that in. That's always a problem with old gear like this. You're bound to find something like a seized pot or something. Back over. Got our tube connector, and there should be, yeah, this, everything's getting in a knot now from all the back and forwards. I think that pot wire went down the side of the tube there somewhere. Trying to get that back out of the way. That's better. Okay, we can put our tube back in. Another little bit of dust in there. Oh, what's that? oh, that button's nothing to do with putting this back together. These all our tube screws get out of the way. Got so much cleaning stuff. Now that was uh, something else. I forgot what that was now. Oh, that was the headphone socket. That's what it was. So we got, should be four of these longer screws by the look of it. Leave the magnetic screwdriver to be safe, I think. Even if it does want to bump the camera around a bit. Now that was that one, this is the other front one. Which hole did it go? That one must be. 
Uh, oh, which one had the little... Oh, that was the head filing that was up the front here. Oops. Oh, like something bumpy. Put our older cap back on. Being careful to click both bits under the edge of the tube. A little anode cap thing. God, these are fiddly little ones, these ones. Don't think I've ever seen such a small one. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Look like it was locked in. Might just have to poke that in with a screwdriver, I think. It's going to be too small to... Come on. But the screwdriver's too big as well. In you go, that's it. Yep. Shouldn't come off. Yeah, I need that metal bracket. Did that go on top? I think it went on top of the other bits. Just to make life difficult. So that should slide on there. For some reason this came off. We want to make sure we get our little copper earthings thing there. That's not the way it went. I've got it on the wrong side, have I? Must be. So how can it go the other way? Oh, that's, oh yeah, press, that'll press down on the tube, oh yeah. Just not the way they normally do, but this isn't your average little telly. Now, yeah, I'm missing one more. Where's the other bit gone? I thought I just had it. Could have sworn I just had it. That's weird. Where'd the other bracket go? Uh, not there. I swore I just had that in right in front of me. And now it seems to have disappeared. I didn't knock it on the floor, did I? Oh wait up, I know where it is. It's on the that's on the on the cable there. That's always something you forget. And that was it. So does that must go the other way, is it? Yeah, that's it, that sits in like that. Rolls lined up. Well, that was a bit more drama than I thought just for cleaning the pitcher tube. Well, than I expected, so... But it was a good thing I pulled that to bits. I got the knob clean, got those other knobs on this circuit board clean, and fixed the faulty pot, tuning pot. So I think they went around like that. Where on earth did this headphone socket go? Right down the front there somewhere. Like that, and then there's a weird little bracket. Except I just stole the screw off it, didn't I? There it is. That's not the easiest to get to either. Now they've done this, it'll be easier to slot it on and then screw it in, slot everything in there. So that it jumped out of course. That's it. wires probably went up on top of there. Maybe I should have ran them through there, I'm not actually sure. I might have to go back and check that there, they might have actually ran... Well you wouldn't want them anywhere near that older cap, so I reckon that's what that metal is there to protect against. 
Um, before I do that, let's just check off. I'll bet this board's got to come right up to go back in. Uh, we've got a yoke to plug back in, which is down there. I can't remember where that speaker plugged in now. Over here, I think. Yeah, I think that was it actually. It went and tucked in under the TV. Because it should be hooked back into the radio section, I would think, which is that would be our amp chip on that heat sink. And this would naturally, have, the speakers and headphone would plug, since the speakers go through the headphone socket, they'd plug right into the amp chip. So I've got to slot this. Oh, I took that bracket off, didn't I? Just have to go under that plastic bit on the bottom. Uh, I'm sure it feels like something's stopping up wanting to go back in. No, it's just them buttons weren't lining up, I think. So now I need to get this bloody thing out of the way. before I put it all together really check should have checked that tuning dial does pretty well line up the way I want it to but I don't think I'm going to pull that to bits again even again even if it doesn't I'll be super careful with this picture tube that's right down on there it's a little low maybe but let's see where it goes on the top oh no that's pretty good yes so it goes up above, or right to the end there. Oh no, that's pretty, that's maybe one or two millimetres out, so I'm not going to worry about that. I should give you a look in a minute, but I want to... want to put this back together first, so I don't, don't want to risk breaking that tube, get the neck board back on it and get everything back together. in the worst spot. I'll have to magnetise the shorter screw dial because this one's not real good for this job. Oops. There we are. If that goes there, what's the other long one for? back which used to be there. Not sure why those ones have got washers but might as well try and put it back the way it's meant to be. So we've got a screw there, screw there, screw there. Where do I get the other long one from? That's the next question. Well, we should have something to hold these on to. Oh yeah that's what holds those wires in place, that's alright so I don't have to worry about that. screws holding that on. Let's get rid of that. Or did I use them for something else that I shouldn't have? <laughs> I can't remember what actually holds these pots on. Or was it a single screw? Yeah, it looks like it might be a single long one. Although I better check at the back. Where do the pots go? There. Oh, it's actually the middle one is the, uh, of course, is the back screw. Do they, are they deep holes? They're fairly deep. I'm not sure that came out of there. Right. Yeah, I put back in there, I put a long one in there, didn't I? 
Uh, no. Okay, it's got one of the pop screws back in. I could put the careful to get that right, not bend the pins. Not put too much force. Oh god, is that going? Maybe I've already bent the pins. They look pretty good. It does not feel like it's going on. That's the gap in the pins. Something must be slightly very stiff pins. I don't, I don't bend easy. Yeah. Probably oh yeah, just a matter of jiggling it a bit to. Oh, that's flimsy. Jiggle it until all the pins actually locate in the socket bits. So I think I'm missing a screw. Oh, I'll find another one. Anyway, so that's that's how low the dial goes. It's a little bit above probably one width of that red bit above the very bottom. So nothing's really showing until above the bottom a bit but it does go right up and yeah it hits the top basically there so I'm probably half a dial width out ah and some little bit of muck's got in there of course always the way yeah there's some little almost looks like a dead critter or something in there so I might have to loosen that tube off again and and do something about that. Get that cleaned out. There's always something seems to fall in there. I'll get the power connected back up and at least test this thing. Oh, I haven't listened to the tape deck. I actually did get this. Ran out of the camera, ran out of battery. I did get the tape deck and check it. And the speed's back up to normal, though it does sound like it's got a little bit of wow. But um, one of the channels is very low and a bit distorted, so I had to clean the, the contacts in this, the TV radio, or tape, yeah, TV tape radio switch. And that got that channel back again, so I gave that a squirt of contact cleaner, did the record playback switch. I don't think I did the radio switch yet, so I probably should give that a squirt as well. But um, that's another thing to look at on these units. It's just, yeah, one channel of the tape very low. And it actually did sound somewhat distorted, which is odd, but I guess it's just something to do with the dirty contacts. As soon as I gave that a squirt and flicked it a few times, she came right after that. Yeah, oh, I guess we'll have to slide this out. I've got to turn it on. It's got a power battery light, which is a good sign. I think we're still in probably tape mode at the moment. So I'll try to set in it. Sounding too bad. Okay, I've put this unit back together now. It's actually cleaned up reasonably well considering how bad it was when I got it. A lot of grease on it. So it's come up pretty clean, pretty shiny. Those buttons have got a lot of shine back on them. I think this tuning for the radio could still do it with a little bit of a clean. But I've got it all back together. Um, obviously, when you put these knobs back on, you need to turn them to the stop position and then put the knob pointing back to the minimum before you put them all back to normal volume shouldn't be up same with the switches make sure you get them lined up just as you start pushing them on and then before you push them home uh, with getting this apart was a bit of a pain with this all the knobs just pull off in the usual way but I actually had to use the wider a fairly wide flat blade screwdriver actually poke it down 
did mark the case just a little bit. It probably wants an even wider bit of metal if possible, but these were real hard to get off. I don't know if they were glued or just old age, but you actually have to prise these upwards before you can actually get the front off the unit. So that's a bit of a thing to watch out. It did mark the knobs and cabinet ever so slightly, but given this thing's far from mint condition, it's not the end of the world. Uh, on the back here, you we've got vertical hole brightness contrast. It's actually got a proper 75 ohm Belling Lee type antenna socket rather than the usual little 3.5 millimetre. You can switch between external and internal antenna. It's actually got a 12 volt connection as well as your normal figure eight 240 volt. And yeah, battery compartment of course, which in this one's actually in mint condition surprisingly. It's got a few of these tubes. But it doesn't look like there's been any batteries in it in its life, but it certainly hasn't none that have leaked. So that's always good. Put that back together. And I'm just going to power it back up. But um, yeah, there is, is a little bit of wow in the tape deck. That seems to be really the only problem left, although I should try the... Um, let's see if I can get this set-top box up and running. Oh, actually, I can use my pattern generator. That plugged in, yes it is. If I can find an RF lead for it, we can actually test the TV. So let's turn that on. We've got our power line up there. What am I on? Tape. That's radio. That's the volume of the Andy. You would like to go and see it. Aspincasino.com.au and get those tickets, like I said, cheap as cheap, 61 bucks. You can't beat that. Now we've got the cranberries with a zombie. It's just gone quarter to ten on. You can tell that all, you know, you know, we try to keep it consistent. All the Jones Characters, and then they're, they're kind of demonised, if you like, in, in, in like film. But not play that. That's bound to get a copyright strike or something. So you can hear on the piano and that just a little bit of wow. Anyway, that was a song I hadn't heard for about 30 years. This old tape I grabbed from a second-hand store just as a a test tape. Never heard of this, I think it's pronounced Gian, something like that. But it turns out, yeah, it's a classic old Australian song from the late 80s. I think it was 89 or something, the copyright on this. So yeah, I completely forgot that song existed, but I guess that's one good thing about fiddling around with old tape decks. You hear a bit of music you haven't heard for a while. I'll go over to television here. And I'll just grab a lead. Here's one of the line over here, that's handy. Again, I think this comes out on channel 3 and 4, this test pattern generator. Well, I've got Definitely some lines there. What are we on UHF? That might help. UV, VHF low. Something coming up. It's hmm, not a good sign. What are we on? Bars. Stray. That's a vertical hold, I think. And there's our contrast. Get our grace go up. And brightness. Yeah, tap quite a bit too bright, but at least I can see what's going on. Oh, that's a vertical hold.
Maybe that's the contrast. Yeah, that's definitely the contrast. Let's go to full contrast. That's the brightness. That's our little four inch screen. Probably tune that a little better. Yeah, so that's, that's definitely working. Okay, now I have the set-top box connected up to this. Uh, it's coming in on a UHF channel. Looks like it's breaking up a bit, the reception there, but that's nothing to do with this. That's just a set-top box. He was very fast yesterday. He didn't quite get the outright result, but today in the wet, he has been the master. We number four at Malala for Terry Picture is a little bit grainy, so I'm not sure if it's, it's either a little bit on the snowy side or a little bit uh, patterning over it, like it's overloading. So maybe the set-top box is putting out too much signal. Yeah, that is dropping out on that channel quite a bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of patterning over it. Channels at work there. Yeah, that seems to be, television seems to be working all right. Maybe not 100% perfect. There's probably an AGC adjustment in there somewhere I could tweak, but nothing on the back. Anyway, probably not gonna get much use anyway, but it, it's basically working. It was good on VHF. It's just on this UHF off this set-top box, a little bit grainy. And um, about the only other thing I really need to do is, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can find another one of the motors for the tape deck. And it uh, might be worth doing another video pull this thing to bits again and try another motor in it, see if it fixes the problem with the, the wow on the playback. Um, but I'm sort of basically happy that this is cleaned up reasonably well and it's working to some degree. Uh, even if the tape deck isn't perfect, I'm never likely to use it anyway. But it's good to have the TV at least working again. And who knows, I might even get some use as a radio, but probably not. And at least it's thick, it cleaned up, probably needs a little bit more work to clean it, but it's come up pretty good. Uh, makes a good little display unit if nothing else and um, yeah that should do for now I'll, I'll see if I can find another motor and if I can it's probably worth hooking this up to the oscilloscope too to have a little bit of a look at the waveform of um, what wow looks like I guess it should be the, the, the waveform should be swinging side to side a bit the frequency changing a little bit uh, when playing like a one kilohertz uh, test tone but I don't know, don't know if I've ever actually looked at it on an oscilloscope, so it might be worth doing that, just have a look, and then yeah, swap the motor over if I can find one at least of the same counterclockwise 12 volt or whatever it was, and you'll see if we can get it going 100%. But that's, that's the video for now, so thanks for watching.